Um, even though I don't fully understand everything about uh, the full stack, I now appreciate that the Go bindings um, actually bind to the node bindings through the React framework or something like that. Like, there's node as part of this, Go is part of this, React is part of this. Um, and somehow there was some interaction between Node and React that was not working the way we hoped. And by purging my Node modules, I was able to fix that. So what was being presented as a React error was actually a Node error. Anyway, um, yeah, I was confused by that. Um... I thought that there were easier things to look at here. A lot of these things look pretty difficult. Um, I wonder, maybe one of these. I know there's 11 check marks. Maybe one of these I could take a look at. But probably not, because UI or front-end stuff is difficult. Um... Yeah, okay, that looks tricky. Um, anything that requires both changing the front end and the back end is probably not a candidate for a first thing for me to work on. So, um, is it really the case that the things I want to look at are all under the Macondo project then? This could be. Uh, so I was curious if I could actually exercise the bot through my website. Uh, I guess we could take a look. So if I want to play a computer, uh, it's fine. Yeah, I'm curious to what extent this works. Um, not that this will change much, but I'm going to try to set myself some... Okay, yeah, I didn't think I would be so fortunate this for that to work immediately. Um... So if I, like, go to... Oh! I just forgot that I was logged in. Previously, I had logged in. So it's... <laughs> Alright. Yeah, that was too easy. So, uh, evidently I'm anonymous now. I'm not logged in. Therefore, I don't have any buttons to play a game. Fair enough that anonymous play is not supported. But also, I've lost my server connection. Okay, so I need to figure out how to connect to the WebSocket server. Um, how badly are things broken? Where would I even go to find that out? Obviously, static assets are still being served. Um, Docker PS would show running Docker containers or Docker containers that are deployed in their various states. These are all up and created and such. All right. So if I'm having an issue connecting to the WebSocket server, um, I do have my host's file set up properly. I'm connecting from a Windows machine to a separate Linux machine. Um, and with a Pale Moon browser that respects my host's file. So... I wonder what the deal is. 404 not found on get socket token. Why not? 
I guess there should be some server-side error somewhere. Um, is there such a concept as an error log, perhaps? Um, I mean, there's the temp directory, but that only contains what I downloaded the other day. Uh, so here's my local file system, or on the Linux box. I built a build script to help automate some of the repeatable build steps. Um, hmm. All right, what's the first error? Okay, that's actually really hard to read. Whoever made this Pale Moon browser didn't concern themselves too much with the yellow or gold on pink text. Um, each child on list of any key prop, fine, whatever. Uh, type error. Value being assigned is not a float, finite floating point value. Stack trace. Um, so perhaps there are other... I mean, I purged all the Lee Words UI no modules. Um, those are warnings as opposed to our first error. Request failed. Can't establish connection to the WebSocket server. If I need to connect to the WebSocket server, I would expect that the Docker Compose file would define what gets bound to various ports and what ports are available. So traffic here is the web proxy server. Uh, no, it's some kind of server that other modules here use to express their content through port 80. Um, but I don't know that the WebSocket server routes its uh, data through traffic. Um, maybe it does. Oh wait, do I have a WebSocket server installed? Let's start there. Um, so, socket setup, WeWords socket, so I definitely have this, um, how do I verify that it's installed correctly? Um, uh, Hmm. So this is enabled to communicate with traffic, whatever needs to be communicated. Um, is port 8087? No, that's the load balancer. That doesn't need to be exposed. So... Okay. Yeah, I'm confused. If I can't log in without the web server, without connecting to the WebSocket server, I guess there should be a log somewhere indicating what went wrong. Um, that would be ideal. Um, wait, I have LeeWords UI, but I don't have LeeWords Socket. I think not having Leeward Socket is my problem. No, this is up a level. We're supposed to have Leeward Socket. 
Uh, and I thought I did install it here, and I did. Uh, I don't have any local changes as far as I am aware. Um, see the readme for more info about how this works. All right. Um, Lee words readme. Lee words socket is socket server. Okay. We did this step already. CD to this directory. And we did the Docker Compose up. All right, socket. See the instructions above for how to run it alongside this API server. So the Docker Compose step should take care of anything and everything we need to do in terms of getting Leeward's socket running. All right. So if I look at running processes, yeah, we've got a running Leeward socket and we have a running Leeward socket too. Um, so, Hmm. I mean, it was recommended I try a different browser. We don't still have Waterfox installed. We don't still have Vivaldi installed. Um, I guess I'll get Waterfox again. Because it's more secure than Firefox. Or at least I trust it better. So... Let's get that. And then we could break our dependence on Pale Moon. I've only installed Pale Moon to try to support some folks uh, who are trying to use Leechus on old Windows computers. Um, All right, here we go with Waterfox. Let's launch Waterfox. All right. We local host. And whoa. Okay, that's funny. <laughs> okay. I guess I can't connect anonymously with two browsers at the same time to the same server from the same IP address or something else fun has taken place here. Possibly the presence of two players on the site is just what's inducing that whatever the error is that we just observed. Let's refresh. Yep, now, oh, never mind. Sweet. Request failed with status code 404. Okay. Ooh, okay. I have no idea. That's, yes, yeah, so a chat failed. Get chats for channel. All right, surely there is a log file somewhere to explain this, right? <laughs> the joys of trying to learn while you're trying to do anything. Yeah, it's such a joy. All right, so what in the world have I done to myself here? I don't know. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
<laughs> All right, I don't suppose we're going to see any errors here in Docker PS. Nope. Nor if I do get status, there's no indication that any files have changed locally. Um, I'm starting to understand why when I proposed maybe we should use Docker more at work, it was met with a little bit of, well, any proposition or proposal has to be met with some uh, both with curiosity and some degree of skepticism. And I think I'm now understanding what's so confusing about Docker, or at least Docker Compose. It's like, if you have one source of truth for errors, where is that source of truth? You don't, because you're composing something together. Um, I could be assuming too much here. But probably I just need to get the right version of Axios or whatever installed. If I don't have the right version of whatever modules I need. So... Is this indicative of... Now, I mean, we saw that there were two WebSocket servers running. So it's not that. The request failed with status code 404. Static main chunk. Do I just need to rebuild the world? Um, maybe. Maybe I should not worry about this right now and just focus on my condo, which might be of more interest. I was just curious if I could exercise my condo so I could know whether or not I had it all working as expected. Um, so I'd hope to try to exercise it through the UI. That looks a bit challenging at present. Um, so can I produce one of these errors maybe somehow? Shell crash on P play. Sweet. Wait, what? Well, that's cool. That's a lot of background information. I'm impressed. Um, invalid memory address or nil pointer to reference. Yeah, maybe I could make more headway on trying to understand this. Because this looks low enough level that... Um, uh, I mean, yeah, there is a lot of surrounding context to understand here, but I'm not simultaneously worrying about front-end and back-end concerns here. This is strictly a back-end thing. So the next logical step with this particular investigation would be to see if there's an easier way to exploit it um, than what got produced here. The playthrough tile's incorrect. So here... I mean, the first step would be expanding the error message. Oh, yes, our board 20 specified 14. Yeah, so 
I was thinking expanding the error logging or message to give more context as to what the playthrough tile is that could be incorrect. Um, board 20 specified 14. Yeah, I'm not even sure if that relates to... I mean, you'd think it would relate to the things above, but you never know. Getting deeply informative logs can be very helpful in troubleshooting complex issues. Um, yeah, I don't know. That'll be kind of a random... That doesn't look easily reproducible, is my point. Um, Endgame still passes unnecessarily sometimes. So I had suggested in Stockfish, I this has been a matter of several discussions in Stockfish, that when the first repetition occurs in search that did not occur in the game tree, um, just don't continue searching that node. Just evaluate it out as if the players had repeatedly um, passed and agreed to a draw or agree to an end of game. Um, so that's a bit of a complex notion. Yeah, There's something easier I could look at. Play legality check. Here, if illegal play doesn't seem to validate that the word isn't immediately after or immediately before a tile. This could potentially lead to interesting exploits like playing word between P and Q and void challenge, or not being able to challenge off the P word Q in other challenge modes. Um, Wow, that's that's cool code there. So also small typo two left friends here. Yeah, that's true too, but two comments. I thought they said two comments. Single tile words should be invalid. Oh come on. <laughs> Single tile words are awesome, but um, yeah, if they're not in the dictionary, fine. Uh, AG4 should score 7, but playing it as J8E scores 8. Oh, oh that's funny. <laughs> okay, yeah. Single tile word should be invalid. Yeah, I don't disagree there. That looks easy. Well, if there is a case for producing a reproducible test and actually trying that out, um, that seems like one of the easier things to test. Um, so we're back to the dilemma we faced yesterday with this. Uh, we've created a make all target, and then I started editing the make file to try to add a test target, and just see could I run any of the tests. And so I ran one that did the alphabet thing, and this failed for lack of an English.csv file. And it's at this point that I got flustered. Um, so, uh, rather than get flustered, I know there is an Etsy words file on Linux. Um, I could produce just an arbitrary file for testing, but I also want to know what the format of the English.csv file is supposed to be. It says CSV. But I've sometimes seen CSV files that are actually tab-separated. I've seen ones where there's only one entry per line. 
like this could mean anything. So I need to take a look at what's actually attempting to read the CSV and then figure out what's the format of the CSV file so that I could produce a valid file. Because otherwise I'd just make a file, get through my test, and then find out whatever I tested was completely wrong. Uh, unfortunately, so... Yeah, should we take a look at... Uh, What was it? This file? Oh. Wait a second. Why am I doing that against github.com? That's a bit silly. Uh, isn't there an alphabet thing on the local file system? Yeah. Um, so there's no need to test it that way. Does this... Syntax actually, no, it's not in go root. Okay. <sighs> what? Let's go look up what the syntax is for uh, go lang test. Yeah, how do we execute? What are the basics of testing in go? other than just testing in production, which I've done before. Um, how do you execute it? Yeah, you can create fixtures, or you can call it test tables, or do you wanna, whatever you want to call it. Go test within the same directory as the test, or by fully quali qualified package name. So the only way to execute the test is to actually change directory into the same directory as the test. Or you have to download the files off of GitHub. Or, I'm sorry, by fully qualified package name. You have to, whatever it takes, um, to obtain the thing under test. Um, well, that's nice. Yeah, let's try that. Yeah, so it makes sense that RTFM should be a good policy. Um, See, this is a dilemma, isn't it? If I do CD uh, alphabet and CD back here, like, I think I know what this is ultimately going to do. Is that uh, because, wait, did it actually return me back to the correct directory? It did. What? Okay, that's cool. Um, so we had an error, and yet I got the cd dot dot change directory back to this directory, even though there was an error, and an exit status of 2. That's confusing. Um, anyway, so now instead of referencing GitHub, this is referencing files on the local file system that, uh, here's letter distribution.go, which is trying to open english.csv at line 129. New bag. All right. And if we take a look at 
where was the ld ld.l ran source so it's a letter distribution pointer um right that letter distribution pointer an attempt to dereference the letter distribution make bag at 129 here and that dereference resulted in a panic um can't help but feel like some of this stack is optimized a bit and it's not showing me what actually got dereferenced or attempted to dereference here I'm sorry. Here's the... Yeah, I misread this. Letter distribution is what I want. No, I, that is where it was. I was looking at line 129. Uh, 0x2c is the pointer that we're trying to dereference. And that pointer evidently here is... I don't know. Something's not right. Um, but yeah, what I was trying to find out. So there's a file english.csv. I don't see a reference to the file pointer. Like I see a letter distribution. I see a random source. Um, Obviously, the letter distribution relies on presence of the English CSV, but, um, like, I want to know what the format is that English.csv is supposed to be in. Um, yeah, what are all the files in this alphabet directory? There's bag.go. Could take a look at that. The bag is the bag o tiles. Woo! That's cool. Um Oh. Here's the CSV reader. Okay, and there's the alphabet cache. So what happens? Where... Where is our actually attempt to read this? Letter quantity value vowel. Okay. So this is a distribution of letters. This is what we're seeking here. Um, yeah, we'll dismiss that for now. Um, Obviously, I saw in the CI pipeline and circle CI that uh, this cache is accessed. Wait, is this... Am I just attempting to get it from the wrong place? Yeah, okay, so there is a file, english.csv. And somehow, <laughs> allow pre-caching. I don't suppose that I have to do the, add this pre-cache to my local test to be able to run this test without running the other tests. Maybe I do. Maybe alphabet was a poor choice of a first thing to test. 
if there's indeed something that could be tested first. Um, what could potentially be tested that has fewer dependencies than alphabet? Lexicon? Is lexicon something that has very few? No, this depends on alphabet. Um, maybe data. No, that's just that's not going to contain a go file. Um. I really thought alphabet would have been the easiest thing to test. Anagrammer, perhaps? But that surely has dependencies on other things. So yeah, this depends on alphabet and config and all that. How about config? Um, okay, config does not contain any tests. So I can't just run tests on the config package. Yeah, I... Of all the things that might need to be tested... I'm just saying. Alright, so... I mean, something even as simple as, like, get the default config. That's not simple at all, but just, I don't know. I'm at a loss. It's a cool project. It's great that it's open source because that means that if a sufficiently motivated developer wanted to get involved, uh, they could. And it's just a question of um, finding sufficiently motivated and skilled developers. Um, it's probably best for now that I just observe the changes as they take effect, um, both by Andy and Cesar. I could just take a look and watch uh, as changes are made, how they're made, what the issues are that get fixed, and the pull requests are that fix those issues. That's probably more constructive for now than me trying to do anything at all. Um, so here's a recent change. Your play must place a new tile. All right, all right. That's now. Why did this fail tests? I wonder. Um, improve play legality check, and then this suddenly. Okay, this add an automatic analyzer. What changed here? Oh, this is the... Yeah, okay, I remember hearing that they wanted to do something like this. Um, how big is this change? 436 lines added. Okay, I could actually read through this. Not that anything beyond skimming it has any value to me, but... Um, yeah, just get the general gist of what they were trying to do here. Let's add something that would automatically analyze a game upon its conclusion. Um, we are asking you to evaluate the last play in the position that we passed in. Generate all possible moves. So that functions. Um... And top is bingo. Oh, that's cool. Check if there's a bingo present in... Um... All right. So that's all well and good, but I'm confused. Clearly this is Andy's change here. Why did the CI fail? This might be complicated. 
But I'm curious. Oh. <laughs> we won't. Oh, this did not fail. It was cancelled. It was cancelled because the more recent change uh, takes priority. There's no run. No need to run the older test if you've got a newer change on the same branch. In this case, the branch is master, but still. Um, if there's a newer change, there's no need to continue running the older thing, apparently in Circle CI, or it was manually canceled either way. So GitHub is showing a red X when really some other canceled symbol would probably be best appropriate or most appropriate there but github doesn't have such a symbol um all right well let's see i think Annie's change is valid obviously Cesar's change is valid and it's good that we're seeing um yeah So I think code review is probably where I'm best suited at present. Not that I have any long-term ambitions yet, but it is cool to see the work they're doing. Um, yeah, I'm... Uh, it's awesome that what they're doing is open source. Um so that like it is possible to recreate this sort of stuff um <laughs> oh, oh this is this is fun um yes um wait and a sec Okay, that's really funny. Uh, this has the best possible intentions. And so what they're saying is that if you are going to use this, you have to do so under an AGPL license. They can grant themselves any license they need to to do whatever it is that they're doing, but if you personally are using it, your use has to be AGPL licensed. Uh, it's a little nuance there that we don't need to get into right now. It's pretty funny though. Um, what that means is that if I have a public facing web server, I have to provide my own dictionary and um, yeah. Hello. Yep. So there's just a lot to learn about everything. Uh, today we saw how to do how to execute a go test um, with coverage, and we saw that this configuration stuff is actually really complicated. Um, so, what's this? Isolating dependencies. This means we can have very small interfaces. One or two methods. Okay. If you're designing a package to be consumed by a third party, then it makes sense to design interfaces so others can write unit tests to isolate your package when needed. Interface to be substituted. Wow, that's really cool. They have composition in mind in a way that uh, at least Google did. Uh, yeah, I agree that it's sad. Um, yeah. I'd kind of hope to have, be doing some puzzles or something like that, but uh, I'm optimistic that whatever it is, they'll figure it out. 
But yeah, you're right, for the moment it is sad. Um, I'm optimistic they'll figure it out, whatever it is. Here, let me switch perspective back to this. So, yeah, there's still more changes in flight that both Cesar and Andy are working on. And if I follow this closely enough, um, then maybe eventually I'll have some idea of where I could try to make a change that I'm interested in. Um, I like cool algorithmic AI stuff. While I don't have... Um, the hours to do something with machine learning or the resources for something of that sort. Um, I might still be able to do some uh, hacky sort of, um, I don't know. Anyway, uh, night time comes, so we shall wrap up here. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.